mystery box. What could be inside? I smell the 80s. What's up, folks? It's me, Gazbot, and it's time for another of Gazbot's toy shots. That's right, Gazbot's toy shots. Uh, as you know, I used to have a certain format where I sat at a table, showed you what I've been getting. Haven't really had the time to do that lately. Also, don't really have that setup. I moved. I will potentially have a better setup eventually, but I don't right now. But all that doesn't matter. I got a mystery box, a box of toy goodness. I uh, believe it is mostly 80s toys. It's a friend of mine, Roybot, sending it to me. And uh, it was he was cleaning out his childhood home, and he's like, I got a bunch of toys. Do you want them? I'm like, yes. He's like, well, I don't know if it's something you want. I'm like, I want it because I either want it or I'll give it to a friend or sell it or give it away. But probably I want it. And uh, I'll take anything you want to send me. So he sent me sort of a sampler box, uh, and I don't know what's in it exactly, and that's what we're gonna do right now. You're gonna follow me on the journey to see what's inside. Let's go! The unboxing! Oh! I'm gonna use some scissors to cut up this priority mail tape. Yeah, okay. Oh boy, it's a lot. Ooh, okay. This is my first little peek. That's your first little peek. Phantom Menace. Hooray! <laughs> it's carded, but I also see some cool red robot guy. Can you see him? Uh, not really. All right, let me go open it more. I think I saw a Stratos from He-Man. And the Masters of the Universe. This should be a treasure trove of 80s good goods. Let's see. All right, here we are. Oh, there's some bags. Okay. I'm trying to tilt it. So here's what I'm saying. I'm going to start pulling them out. We got Star Wars Episode One. Oop, Phantom Menace. This is a Tatooine adventure set. I actually remember having this um, specifically for this little poncho because it went over the Qui-Gon Jinn figure to make him look a little bit... Oh, no, wait, I didn't have this one. I had a different one that had a Qui-Gon Jinn robe. So I have not actually owned this one. Uh, the poncho is the selling point for this as far as I'm concerned. I like also that he clearly opened it but had put it back, uh, back in the day for whatever reason. So it'll still be worth a million dollars even though it was on... Clearance from Kmart for $1. So that's the first thing we got. I thought it'd be all 80s, but here's a little bit of 90s. Late 90s, as it were. Late, as it were. Okay, this is the thing that excited me the most when I picked it up. This guy, I'm 99% sure is from Robotech. Um, I didn't have a lot of Robotech toys as a kid, even though I watched the show. I had a couple of the figures late in the game, but never the, the mechs at all. I have a few now. I'm looking for a stamp on him. This is Bandai or some such. He's got a lot of plugs on the back that looks like he could have hoses. I think there was a guy that rode kind of a sled. And this would have been maybe from one of the later seasons uh, of Robotech, which was adapted from different anime, Maspita or um, the other one, Southern Cross, maybe. I don't see a stamp on his feet. I don't see... Hmm. Do you see a stamp? Okay, I found the stamp. It's on his arm. And it says Matchbox Robotech, so it is specifically the American version. I don't know if there was a Japanese version of this or not, uh, of this toy. Or like if it was the same thing just with a different stamp or if the Japanese one had more metal or a different color or something. On the other arm it says, it almost looks like 1995, Hosa Tatsu Matchbox made in Makal, Makali. I'm assuming that's 1985 and I'm misreading it because 85 is roughly when this would have been out. But anyway, this is very cool. This uh, so far is my favorite thing of the two things, of the prequel pack or this Robotech Warrior. Uh, warrior. I don't know. I guess all Robotech war mechs are warriors. I suppose there could be a science one. Whatever, moving on. All right, so we'll put him here. Let's see what else we got. Okay, this is pretty awesome. A vintage 80s Tauntaun from Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. The fact that he's still got his, um, this thing, poncho? No, this is the saddle. The fact that he's still got a saddle is pretty awesome. And this is also the later version, you could tell, because he had the stomach. Ugh, gross. It feels rubbery. The stomach where you could stuff the Luke Skywalker in, like in the movie, like, this'll keep you warm, kid. <sighs> and I thought they smelled bad on the outside. That's not how Han Solo talks. Uh, one thing that's interesting about this toy is there's just sort of a spring-loaded hatch that you would stick the figures in. So if you don't have the saddle, it looks like they're just jamming their legs inside the guts of the Tauntaun, which you're only supposed to do from the underside. But uh, it has these molded leg pieces on the saddle, so it actually looked like they had their feet in there in the saddle, which was better. But anyway, he's in good shape. I had him when I was a kid. I didn't have the belly version. 
and I lost the saddle at some point, and my dog had chewed up pieces of them. So I haven't had a, even this, even though he's missing the saddle, I mean the bridle, even this complete of a Tauntaun since I was a child. And he will probably, I have a few Star Wars toys that I keep with my Christmas decorations. I might put him in with them and then just bring him out on Christmas to be like, that's when he dies. He won't die because it'll be a Christmas celebration. All right, he'll go there. Let's see what we got next. Whoa, I don't know what this guy is. He's, what? He's also got a saddle. I thought he had a pullback motor where you pull it back, click, 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 zoom, but it's more of a friction where you kind of go. He still works, sort of. Uh, he's got, the tail is rubbery, the head is rubbery, the poncho is rubbery, and of course by poncho we mean saddle. He looks like a weird, not exactly Creature of the Last Lagoon. I don't know what this is from. I don't know if this is a generic, you know, random Creatures of the Deep toy for a kid, or if it's actually from some line or a knockoff. Let me see if I can find a stamp on here. Well, I just took a minute trying to look for a stamp. Couldn't find one. I don't know if there is one, and I'm just not good at looking. I did notice a lot of, like, hot glue holding some of the joints together, uh, and I don't know if that's because it was repaired or that's just how it was made originally. But anyway, this thing is a mystery, so we'll move on. What is this? Oh, it is Stratos. Missing his legs. <laughs> Luckily, he can fly. Oh, no, he doesn't have his wings. So he's like, he activates his jetpack. He's like, <laughs> thank goodness, because I don't have my legs. I could use my jetpack. Oh, but without my wings, I can't steer. And he crashes right into the mouth. <laughs> and he's got a rubber head, too, you see. So I can, they're both the same sort of animal. So I'm sure this, he can digest his flesh because they're both rubber people. At least parts of them. They also have the hard plastic. So yeah, it works out. Um, I don't know if his legs are in there or what. I guess we'll find out. Stratos was one of the first Masters of the Universe He-Man figures I had as a kid. And I liked him a lot, even though he was barely in the show. Uh, and he's kind of weird. He's got kind of like a monkey face, even though he's supposed to be a bird man. But for whatever reason, he was a favorite of mine. All right. Oh, look. Hey, it's a Stratos leg. I wonder if it could pop back on. Let's find out. Oh, the, oh no. It's not going to pop back on because it's like an O-ring. It's It's rubbery plastic kind of like the o-rings that would hold old gi joes together it held the legs on so that is permanently damaged there there might be a way to repair it but not just by snapping it in so who knows let's keep going oh this guy okay the, he i'm betting he goes with this I, i'm not sure he does certainly fit on there haha -ha! and they seem to match um i kind of remember these guys and they had like little sticks if you can see he has holes in his hand so there'd be little stickers um, there'd be little stickers that would go in his hand, not stickers like you stick in a sticker book or on a guitar case, but like a, a long toothpicky, maybe glow in the dark possibly, like a trident. This guy is basically a bendy figure with little, and he's, and he's in good shape. Like usually these bendy figures get all bent up where like the wires are sticking through and stuff. Um, I, I recognize him from the eighties. He was in this, it wasn't a knockoff brand so much as like a C-list brand, you know, you'd see at the dollar store or whatever. I can't remember what it was called. It was something like Fantasy Warriors or Dragon Riders or something. So I'll put him with him. That's, they're a set now. Okay, what else we got? Another Masters of the Universe vintage. This is Stinkor. Let's see if he smells. A little bit. He still kind of smells. Uh, my understanding is that that's patchouli, which is a, a, a hippie favorite. And yeah, I don't like it. Uh, okay, it works better than I thought. The second sniff got me a better sniff. He's supposed to have kind of a clamp-on armor that has a gas mask built in right here. Uh, he doesn't have that, so you can really see that he's actually a repaint of the original Merman. And it's a lot more apparent without the thing covering his face. Um, but so that's cool. I can't believe he still smells um, good for them. Let's see what's next. Oh, this guy. Okay, here, look. It's a sticker. It's a sticker. A glow-in-the-dark sticker. So I was right. He... I can't be sure that this is with these guys, although I'm, I'm fairly positive. My educated guess is that he's with them, but I don't know for sure. But these two certainly go together. They're enemies. Chop, 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 chop. Yeah, you got me with your sticker. It's a glow-in-the-dark sticker. Huge. And he is the same of any figure, whatever. Okay. This, oh, I like this. Yeah, yeah, all right. You know what this is, don't you? Well, you might not. <laughs> Even if you're a child of the 80s, you might not. Let me, uh... Ugh, put my hand in here and hope I don't regret it. Find some gross kid gum or boogers. Ah, shouldn't have said boogers. Um, okay, so here we go. This is from a line called Sectars, which is 
sort of mid to late 80s uh, after He-Man and a lot of other things have come out. And they're like, oh, we just got to put a gross, weird gimmick and whatever. So there were figures that were like six, seven inches tall that were like insect people, good guys and bad guys. And then they rode on these things, which were like larger, I guess, less sentient insects. So I don't know the name of this guy, but basically they became puppets. So his legs, if you could see, is actually my hand in the puppet. And then this is actually fuzzy. The figure would sit here. Here, let's put Stinkor on there. I am Stinkor! Now this is gonna stink, but whatever. And I have a little trigger here that makes these close. It looks like the spring-loaded action is a little messed up because it should be like, I'm going to get you, Stratos. Chop. Oh, I missed, hold on. Chop, oh, my head. I, it, like, he shouldn't even have a head because the other guy ate it, but you know what I'm saying. And then I let go. Oh, it worked. Oh, I see. I thought it was spring-loaded, but it's actually down, up. Down, up. I have to manually open it. It's a little sticky, um, but there you go. So this is one of those. Some of them had wings. This is really cool. This is probably... This... Uh, uh, mm, it's tough. This this might be tied with the... I don't know. I'm, I'm ranking them already, but th this is a good one. I I'd thought of... I don't have any sectors in my collection at all, and I had thought about getting one or two just for representation. So now that I have this, I'll have to find a figure to ride it at least. All right, moving on. Okay, this is a big old bag of boggles. Uh, it looks like G.I. Joe's. It looks like A-Team. Let's open it up. It's a Ziploc bag of boggles. All right, so we got this thing, which seems like a knockoff Transformer, maybe? Or not, oh, geez, the piece just fell off. Um, this could have been a Happy Meal toy, or, you know, it, it kind of feels like a cereal prize. Like, it came in ten pieces, and you had to put it together, and they called it, like, Transbots, or, you know, Astroformers, or something like that. Because he's got, I think, <laughs> I think this is, like, robot mode, and he's got a little monster face. But then, do 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 I'm transforming. I, I mean, I'm alt-forming, and now I am into, you know, Space Tank, or whatever. And he's got, like, wheels, so that's, yeah, that's garbage. <laughs> Here's a, oh, I was gonna say it's a Hot Wheels, but it's got a little windy. They got rubber wheels here. Let's see when I wind it. Uh, uh, uh. Hey! No. Oh, there it goes. I just didn't have the strength to get off my hand. Maybe if I put it, look at this, coming in handy. Wait. Come on. All right, go. That sort of works. I don't know what this is. Oh, on the bottom, let's say it says... Buddy L, Hong Kong. So Buddy L's the company, and it's, uh, what is it, 1980? One, 81, okay. Let's see what else is in the bug. Oh, look, it's a good guy with a sticker, a glow-in-the-dark sticker. That's, that's not him talking, that's the sword. He's like, I will use my sword. It'll stop you. You make me seem less intimidating. Anyway. I believe that he would fight these guys. So maybe I was wrong. I said these two were enemies, but maybe these three are enemies against him because it's always monsters against humans. But then maybe they're also like, oh, I think this may be a woman. I think this is a woman character. Maybe not. Oh, this one. I don't know why I said that. Because <laughs> this one also has a, a drape. Maybe he, had, well, they're all, oh, you know what? I had it wrong. They love each other. Okay, anyway. So next up. This is the woman, human. She's got ink on her. I'm betting somebody decided, either kept her in a drawer and a pen exploded, but what I prefer to think is that she lost her little glow sticker and someone said, oh, the inside of a ballpoint pen could be a nice spear, and then ink, ink, ink. But you could pretend that she like injured this guy, ah, and he's got this inky blue blood. She's like, ah. Okay, so that's her. So those are all fantasy beast masters or whatever they are. Oh, this guy. This is a Robotech figure. This is pretty cool, hold on. I wanna make sure I don't break him with his swivel arm grip. Sometimes they get really fragile where you just move their arms and legs as they're supposed to. Now he's got, I don't wanna show you, but he's got an O-ring in him, a little rubber ring holding this part together, similar to what was here, similar to, I mean, this is basically a G.I. Joe, but it's Robotech. This is his Andrade Trooper. I like that he still has his helmet. Underneath you can see he's green, so you know he's not a humanoid. Well, he is a humanoid, he's not a human from Earth though. Um, so that's pretty cool. He could ride on him like this and say, I'm your buddy. I'm master. You're blaster. Let's go fight Mad Max. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Who runs Bada Town? Bowser Blaster runs Bada Town. That's right. Okay, so he's pretty good. I like him. I'll put him over here. He will fall down. Okay, 
Then, from the 80s A-Team, not the new movie with Liam Neesonian, we've got Hannibal Smith? Is that his last name? Hannibal... It's not Lecter. Hannibal, let's say it's Hannibal Smith. Hey, I'm Hannibal Smith. Look at me wearing an outfit I never wore in the show. This isn't the military outfit I had in the beginning, and it's not one of my normal outfits, and it's not me wearing a Godzilla suit. I'm kind of wearing a faux military... I don't know what he's wearing, but he has a smirker. He has a smirker. See him? Smirk. Er, I love it. I love it when the plane comes together. <laughs> That's not what he sounds like, but okay, so we have him. I wonder who else we have. Well, ba -da -ba -ba -da. We've got, that's not how the theme song goes. Mr. T, he pities the fool that doesn't have a green jumpsuit like him. And he's even got a weird little, uh, like, Boba Fett, generalissimo kind of thing. I feel like these figures, I haven't looked into the history, but I feel like these figures, which don't look like the outfits they wore in the show, and they don't look like military outfits, Especially B.A., that's the weirdest one, because he had such a distinctive look with the feather earrings and the, the gold chains, and there was, like, a 12-inch figure of him that talked and looked like that. And I think they had, like, 5-inch figures also that looked more like the characters from the show. I'm betting these... Who put these out? Galoob or some company that doesn't normally do figures? I mean, later they did Micro Machines, but this is pre-that. Uh, I don't know. I can't find a thing, and I'm not going to sit here looking for it. I'm going to keep looking. Uh, yeah, here's a face man. Oh, boy, he's had an injury. Face man... Wearing all black as the covert op, even though he's literally the face man, which means he goes in and shows his face and is all charming and stuff. He's missing an arm, but that's okay because there's this gun, which I think is a Star Wars gun, like a 90s Star Wars gun. But now he's got a gun arm. I'm Cybernetic Face. They used to call me Face Man. Now they call me Gun Arm Man. It's not as catchy, but... Okay, so there's those three. We're still missing Howling Mad, and I think there might have been an Amy figure who... I don't know if she was in the whole show or just the first season, but... Back to my suspicion as I dig in. Yeah, okay, here's Howlin' Mad Murdock. And he has his hat on at least, which is good. Oh, the heads are rubbery. I just noticed that. Unlike G.I. Joe figures, they've got little rubber heads. Not as not squishy like a He-Man figure. They're solid rubber, like an eraser. So he's wearing his orange jumpsuit because he's in a pit crew. Um, like I said, I suspect these bodies were made for some knockoff G.I. Joe line and they just repainted them for the A-Team. So let's take a look. This is the A-Team, a version of which no one has ever seen except in this form. Maybe they were gonna do a cartoon or something, but again, B.A. Baracus, Mr. T, he had a cartoon called Mr. T and the T-Force and he still had his chains and his vest, like he, he, yeah. You are not Mr. T, you're Jake T. Okay, here is a cape, a black cape. I, I'm not sure who this goes to. It's very hard plastic. I want to say this could go to like a Lords of Light figure, but that's probably wishful thinking. Ooh, this, oh, this is, this is very good. This is, makes me very happy. This is a Rick Hunter from Robotech figure. I've been wanting one of these. I actually don't have any Robotech figures from this original line, but the fact that he's still got his helmet, because these figures are not great, if I'm being honest. Again, they're sort of knockoff. They're not knockoffs of G.I. Joe because they're Robotech, but the technology of the figure is a knockoff of this sort of, G.I. Joe system, and like the waist is a little bit high from where it should be, and their thumbs notoriously break off, and they're just like a little bit less well made overall. But you put that helmet on him, I don't even want to take it off right now. You put that helmet on him, you stand next to a Veritech, he's gonna look pretty slick. And look at this, he's even, uh, as I say, he's even got his gun, but now this kind of looks like an Uzi. I don't think this is his gun. I think this maybe goes with one of these guys. Oh, Howlin' Mad, he's got a busted thumb. I was gonna put it in his hand. Busted thumb. And G.I. Joe's get that too, but the knockoff G.I. Joe's get it even more. Here, I'll give it to Oh! Face is missing an arm and a thumb. So if he didn't have that gun arm, he couldn't do anything. So let's uh, I'll try to put it in Hannibal's hand and watch it break as I put it in. Okay, he got it. There you go. Hannibal's got an Uzi. Alright, he's not tweaky from Buck Rogers. He's ba -da -ba -da. So, anyway, I'm pretty happy about him. I'm gonna, here, tell you what. Rick Hunter on the... Rick Hunter on the planet of Hoth. Rides his tons on. A Zendradi appears. <laughs> See, little did you know that Tauntauns could also reverse digest people. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Going back into the bag, what do we have? Oh boy, talking about Happy Meal toys. This, I believe, is like an egg McMuffin or a McSandwich with like really gray bread. But no, it's not. I am, uh, what the? Okay. Ah, look at me. I'm some kind of robot, I guess. I've got a red, weird face. Um, 
I kind of remember these food formers. I don't remember if that's what they were called, but there would be like a pack of fries turned into a robot. So I'm guessing this is from that line, but he's a little uglier than I remember. Maybe he was a bad guy. Anyway, sandwich, robot, you decide. This looks like a Gobot or a knockoff Gobot. Gobots were machine robo in Japan. Um, oh, he's tight. He is a tidy whitey. Okay, those go back. The one good thing about the old Transformers and Gobots is you can pretty much transform them without knowing how they work, even as a kid. The newer ones, even with instructions sometimes, I get stuck on a point where I'm like, oh, I need to fold the middle crotch piece backwards sideways before I flip out the secondary leg calf side. And they're better toys, they look better, they're better articulated, they transform and look more like the things they're supposed to look like. But, um, yeah, as I say that, I'm having a hard time transforming him. Not because I don't know what to do, but these arms you're supposed to kind of pull out, and I'm having a hard time getting a grip on him. Looking at him, I do not think that this is an official transform uh, go by. It's definitely not a transformer. Um, I think it's either a remold where they use different colored plastic or a completely different robot that someone made up, like a Zybot or something like that. Um, it's good enough quality that I don't think it was free in a Happy Meal or anything, but it was probably like $1.99 versus $3.99 a GoBot is or whatever. All right, moving on. Here's a car. It's missing something. I thought it was a Transformer. Okay, it's like a Cobra. It's got like a, oh, I'm a Cobra. So I'm awesome. Oh, this might be like a Penny Racer maybe. Okay, so you can pull that open. I don't know what that does. He's missing one of his pipes on one side. And, uh, oh, this sort of bloop, 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 bloop. I don't know, maybe that has something to do with something, I don't know. Oh, because to put it in, when you pull it out, it goes, boo. Let me show you the other side. When you pull it out, it goes, boo. So there were smaller cars than this that I remember being called something like penny racers. Because if you look in the back, you could put a penny or a nickel, and it would make them go like, Bruh. And I don't know if that's what this is. Let me see. It says it's made by Takara? Yeah, Takara. 1982, Takara. Oh, and there's a little lock right there on the bottom. There's a little lock switch. So, well, anyway, that's that. I don't know what that does, but here's a, he's a, he's a truck, car. Oh boy, this is ugly. This is an ugly. There's a lot of these. This might be a Happy Meal Transformer. Okay, goes from jet to robot. Click, spin. <laughs> now this is, while I was saying it's good to have like an easy to transform transformer, this is the other end of it where it's like, oh, I'm a jet, and really the only difference is you spin that around and make me tall. Now I'm a robot. It's it's uh, not very good. I, I money. This is a Happy Meal toy. Let me see what does it say. Tonka, Japan. It's made by Tonka. So okay. So I'm betting this is a GoBot Happy Meal toy, like a knockoff Leader One. Like I am Burger King One. Blah, 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 blah. I'm purple and I'm terrible. Okay. This guy. This is a GI Joe. Well, uh, technically, no, it's not. I mean, it's made by the company that Hasbro that makes G.I. Joe. It might have been under the G.I. Joe flag. But I believe this is Sergeant Savage, or at least one of the people from Sergeant Savage, which was a line that came out in the 90s, uh, like mid-90s, uh, that was after Real American Hero, the short 80s one that like had the cartoon and stuff, but pre like Extreme and Sigma 6 and all that stuff, where they actually tried to go back to like more of a World War II realistic-looking um, soldiers. Now, granted, he's pretty buff for a realistic-looking soldier, but I remember they had like a really cool helicopter and stuff. I believe that is what he is from. And let me see. I didn't even look for a stamp. I'm not gonna, because I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay, here is Darth Maul's lightsaber. Maybe that came with that pack. Here is a gold sword that I don't know if it goes to anybody that I've looked at so far. Here is a gun, which again, I think is 90s to 2000s, you know, modern Star Wars. Uh, a pistol, a brown pistol. That's weird. Uh, okay, this is, I believe this is the first real GoBot we've seen. I want to say his name is Divin or Torpedo or something like that. And he feels metal. I mean, he could be a machine robot, but I'm guessing since this is an American friend of mine. He has a GoBot, so you pull his legs, gopes, and then the top comes out. And I remember this guy thinking the top worked better than the bottom. Although, actually, he's not that bad. He is a not a that bad. These wheels are getting in the way. Like, he's <laughs> he's got wheels kind of in an unfortunate place, if you see what I mean. Uh, don't kick me in my wheels. My axle is sensitive. But he actually transformed pretty well. And, uh, yeah, he has like a nice chrome head. And he seems like he'd stand up, so he's not in bad shape. He's a lot better as a robot than he was as the... Uh, submarine so yeah he's pretty good pretty pretty good maybe he'll ride the sectors thing 
Why are you riding that? You have an alt mode. You can transform into a vehicle. Oh, who's saying that? This guy. Soldier, why are you doing that? Because I turn into a submarine. A submarine is very useful. Not on land! Not on the sky! Just in the water. And not even on the water! Underwater! You could launch missiles. It's boring! I'm boring! And then... Chomp, chomp, chomp. You're still boring. It's the insect that's interesting. Curses! I know he's right. He's right. All right, moving on. Wow, my leg is falling asleep, so I'm gonna do that. Clock. Okay, I clocked my leg. Here we go, another, here's a, like a Davy Crockett gun. Brown. A lot of little accessories in here. I dumped this whole bag of zippers. Goo, 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 goo. All right, here is what looks like a Qui-Gon Jinn lightsaber with like a really badly painted handle, probably from that set. Another old-fashioned brown gun. And uh, this is possibly Rick Hunter's gun. It's the closest I've seen. If not, it's another Star Wars gun. Uh, another gun. Again, these guns all kind of look like Star Wars guns to me, like modern stars. Oh, no, wait. This one has a hose back on it, so it might be from G.I. Joe. That typically, I think, of G.I. Joe. Although, could be the A-Team because they're copying G.I. Joe. And actually, for that matter, it could be the Zendrati. So, I guess we'll find out. And here's a toolbox. I don't Maybe this is all A-Team stuff? I don't know. No, these are too big. These are knives. Brown. Always like a brown knife. I was like the original Ninja Turtle figures. All came with brown weapons. Here's some kind of... Uh, macro binoculars you can barely see them I'm betting that's the star wars pack oh here's a helmet which i bet you goes to this guy oh okay putting pieces together here's his helmet now i'm a sergeant and he looks like the kind of guy that would have a brown gun like this oh the handle on the gun is oh there is no handle because it's like that weird kind of rifle that you sort of hold like this but if they're ah, see this seems kind of like the type of gun this character would have but I do remember this line trying to kind of be more realistic. So why would they give him a brown gun? I don't know. We'll put him aside for now. Uh, here's Darth Maul's lightsaber without the blades. Oh, look, here's the chrome piece that goes to the guy that we didn't know what he did. Well, I didn't. You might be like, I know exactly what that is. Shut your face. Uh, I can maybe repair that later. I'm not going to do it now. Uh, here's another gun, space-looking gun, and a piece of broken plastic. I'll put that back in the box. Damn bones! Look at me! Ha <laughs> I'm a rotund insect man! Call me Beetor! I'm kind of sticky to the touch! Don't know why. Um, I do know why, because certain plastics, over time, if they're not kept in climate-controlled environments, or sometimes even if they are, the chemicals inside start to leach to the surface, which can lead to discoloration, or at the very least, a tacky, sticky touch, which sometimes you can wash off, sometimes not. I got a bunch of figures uh, from my aunt, a bunch of star... Uh, turtle figures that all of them were sticky and I had a really hard time washing them. I put some through the dishwasher and stuff and it still was sticky. So hopefully I could clean him up. I like that he has his like little bandolier thing and I wonder if some of these weapons, oh, you know what? This is probably his weapon. This gold sword looks very insectoid. I'm pretty sure that's a sector weapon. Cool. So he has at least one weapon. There might've been a gun around here somewhere, but I'm reasonably certain, well, he's definitely a sector and this is definitely sector mount. Wow, he doesn't fit it as well as the He-Man guy did. Uh, this is probably, they probably came together. Because if I remember right, it was like, if you buy one of the larger insects, they come with the rider. So this is probably his scenario right here. Scenario! Okay, so moving on. Still don't know what this is for. It could be Jedi Luke. Could be 90s Jedi Luke. All right, what's this? Why is it in a bag? Oh, this makes me uncomfortable. I feel like I don't want to touch it. Is this Batman made of poop? Oh boy. Ugh. Ugh. Ah! Oh god, why? Why? It's Batman made of poop. It's Batman made of poop. It's Batman made of poop. <laughs> this is. Uh, this probably. Uh, okay. Okay. This probably is. <laughs> it probably is not made of poop. It looks like a, a rubber. Uh, I don't know why this is grossing me out so much. I grossed myself out. It's a bendy Batman that is, like, had seen better days. It's rubber. It's probably just dirt. It's probably buried in the backyard, but it just it just makes me think it's, it was in somebody's butt, and it's covered with poop, and it grosses me out. I'm going to throw that away. Oh, yuck. Oh, okay. What the? Yeah. You, you, you tell me. Kagodonto. <laughs> I don't know what this is. It's another bendy figure. 
It looks like something you get on Halloween, maybe, because he's like has like bloody hands, some kind of weird vampire in a suit and a little red like I ate Little Red Riding Hood on my way to a meeting, and now I'm a vampire. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Oh, he went back in the box. Get out of the box. You're done. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Okay, we got Captain... No, this is not Captain Power. This is um, Adam Power. Adam Power? Is that his name? I'm pretty sure that's his name. He is from the Power Lords. He looks just like a normal guy in an orange suit with like a really nervous look on his face and kind of jaundice. So what What, what can he do? I don't know. I, but, but then when trouble arises, you press the button... Ta-da! And all my skin comes off! <laughs> yeah, no, he is some kind of Power Lord monster. He has a crystal in his forehead. This is a whole line of transforming um, heroes and villains. Well, the heroes were transformed, some of them, from humanoids to, like, these more monstrous forms that were more powerful. Um, it didn't last very long. It had, like, three issues of a comic series from DC, which was drawn, I believe, by Mark Texeria before he was famous. And... Um, Four Horsemen tried to do a, a revival of these at a smaller scale. I bought a few, and then it was canceled, so it's an incomplete set, which bums me out. But this is the vintage one. Uh, there's a famous artist. I want to say Sid Mead, but that's probably not right. A famous, like, conceptual sci-fi artist that did a lot of work for this. And this was definitely high concept. Like, it was definitely more about the idea than, like, it didn't have a show or anything. I remember I was part of the fan club, and I had this cool poster that you had to color yourself. And uh, I didn't have gray crayon, so it was suggested to me that I use a pencil, and that made gray, which was great. So anyway, that has nothing to do with this, but he is out of power. All right, it looks like there's just one thing left in the box. Another bag. This might be... Oh, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It is Power Rangers, which is cool, because I've been collecting Power Rangers in my later lifetime now. Uh, it is from the movie. It is, uh, well, you could tell. From the original Power Rangers Mighty Morphin movie, it was a Happy Meal toy that uh, this is Tommy the White Ranger with his Falcon Zord, but it's like this diminutive, reduced version. Um, I, I wonder, I guess it came in the bag like this, which is kind of interesting. I, I don't remember them coming like this. This seems really deluxe for something you get in a Happy Meal. I wonder if this was a case where like, for an extra $2, you get this figure, because this does seem like way too much for just something to be free with your meal. Like maybe just the figure or something, but yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen it like this. I've de I, I definitely never owned it like this. I've owned a few of these throughout my life, randomly pieces, but this is a little bit cooler, all put together like this. I'll probably leave it in the bag like that. Oh, there is one more thing in the box. One more thing. Stratus' other leg. hi -yots! So, some of this stuff I'm gonna keep, some of it I might give to a friend of mine, some of it I might donate or sell. Um, I would say more than half of it I'm gonna keep, but I have to figure out where I'm gonna put it, what I'm gonna do with it, things like that. Right off the bat, though, Robotech Mech, which I'm going to have to look up information, Zendrati, Rick Hunter, they're all going right into a display shelf I have for my Robotech. So, boom, immediately out in the display. I also have a very small GoBot section that I'll put this gentleman next to. Also, the Tauntaun, uh, even though it's mid to late January, a lot of my Christmas decorations are still out because we're on vacation. I've had a chance to put them away. So, I will put him out with them today and probably put him away tomorrow. But that is where he will go immediately. So those guys all have immediate homes. The rest I gotta figure out what I'm doing. Okay, back to the ah, There we have it. I did do some checking and the red robot from Robotech is the Bioroid Invid... Invader? Fighter, the Bioroid Invid Fighter. Uh, he is only missing his gun, so the, the holes in the back, that's just molding. It's not like he's missing uh, whatever. I did see that two of the guns did go to the two Robotech fighters, the Zendradi and Rick Hunter, so I, those are actually complete. That's pretty awesome. And uh, the, the hovercraft, the Invid Hover that I was talking about, going with that figure, it, it doesn't come with it. It's sold separately, but they do go together. So my memory was a little better than I thought. So anyway, this is a fun adventure. Um, I, it's such a hard thing to replicate because it's sort of like going to a flea market and finding a box and digging through it or whatever. But like, even if I bought a box of things on eBay or something like that, there's a certain element of, I know what I'm getting. There's, I'm getting into it. I'm making decisions. I have an idea. And this was just literally a super fun, here's a box of crap that you'll probably like. And even the stuff that I wasn't like into personally, it was just like a fun little time capsule adventure of toys. So thank you very much to Roy. And uh, thanks for all you people for watching. And that's it for me, Gazbot. And another gas box toy shots. He da, 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 da. Some of them in my collection eventually, and uh, oh god. Oh.
Okay, where are we? Uh! No! It has the, uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, and it, yeah. <gasps> All right, my leg is falling asleep. How long can I do it? 